which do I believe that? See, okay. people call themselves believers, but they're not believing he died for their sins because they think they're still sinners. Oh, okay, yeah. They're not saints. Uh-huh. He died for your sins, and what we agreed later is that we're not in our sins. He said you should still be in sins if you didn't raise from the dead. He did rise from the dead, so you're not in your sins. Oh, okay. Right? So, he says, um, he goes on, he says that, uh, that he was buried, verse 4, that he rose again. Is it... Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm just double checking, making sure that I. In the third day, according to the scriptures. And then, okay. is it recorded? It's recorded, yeah. Okay. And then he was seen by Cephas, and then by the twelve. Who's Cephas? That's Peter. What does your say, verse 5? Does it say Peter or Cephas? It says uh, he was seen by Peter. Yeah, see, not Cephas. Okay. After that, he was seen by over 500 brethren at once, okay, whom the greater part have fallen asleep. Uh, uh, no, he says who the greater part are, are still around, but some of them have, have, died, have not fallen asleep. No, Notice when he talks about death, he call, talks about sleeping. Oh, yeah. The death uh, is just yeah. sleep. Uh-huh. It means that it's, you're going you're gonna to wake up in heaven. Oh, okay. Right? Uh-huh. He doesn't consider, the, whenever the Bible talks about death for the believer, he refers to it as a sleep. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Right? Oh, okay. Thank it, you. It, yeah. It's too late. Uh-huh. Um, Thanks for reading that. Yeah. <laughs> See what it says? Uh, well, how does yours say? Verse 6. Does it say sleep? After that, he was seen by more than 500 Christians, brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive. But now some have died. Yeah, now. see, yours says died. Uh-huh. The original translation, this is a New King James, so it's the original translation. Uh-huh. It says have fallen asleep. Have fallen asleep. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> After that, he was seen by James and by the apostles. And last of all, he was seen by me. That's Paul. Okay, uh, as one who was born out, out of due time. He says, For I am the least of the apostles, who I am not even worthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. See, he says, I'm not even worthy to be called an apostle. But this is God's doing. God chooses to call me apostle, then I'm an apostle. But I, in, my consent, in my opinion, I'm not even worthy to be called one. Because, the way, after the way I persecuted the church. Yes. Right? Right. Okay? But by grace. See, he credits grace for him being what he is. Right. But by grace God, by, of God, I am what I am, and by his grace toward me, what me was not a vain, but I labored more abundantly that they all, yet I, uh, yet not I, but the grace of God was with me. Okay. So right there he jumps into grace. Uh-huh. Okay, and that's why I wanted to go from here to where I wanted. Last week we talked about three things. We talked about three things. The goodness of God, right? The goodness of God leads us to repentance. Uh-huh. Right? And we talked about the love of God. Paul said, love of God compels me. Uh, well, I wanted to take you into the grace of God. Okay. Okay. Mm. Right? Yeah. yeah. So let's go to the grace of God. Let's go to 1 Timothy. Or no, it's Titus. Sorry. Titus 2.11. 2.11, yeah. So if the goodness of God is what leads me to repentance, then it's not my repentance that's going to get God's goodness. Uh-huh. It's not, people got it backwards. Like we read that thing, you must repent. Uh-huh. Well, I need to, I must, I, what I need to do is believe in the goodness of God so that I will repent. Okay? Because it's goodness of God is going to lead me there. Yes. So what I need to know is how to hear how good God is. Oh, okay. That will lead me to repentance. Okay. And just like it's the love of God that compels me, that motivates me. Remember, the Bible says it's the love of God that compels me. That's the motivator. That's what's going to push me forward. Okay. The love of God. Mm. So goodness of God. Love of God. Right? Now watch this. Verse 11. Yours says it a little different, so I want you to look at this from the King James. For the grace of God, the grace of God, that brings salvation. Right? It's grace that brings salvation. You want to be saved? Trust in the grace of God. Yes. Right? Has appeared to all men. Oh, yeah, to all men. To all men. Uh-huh. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly patches, passions, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly lives in this present age. So it's saying that grace is a teacher. Okay. Grace teaches you wonder how does grace teach me? Yeah. You know, how does grace teach me to live holy, to, to say no to ungodliness, to live a godly life? How does grace teach me that? How, how do you think grace would do that? To the love of to the love of Christ? I think it's kind of like the same way that he says that the love of God compels him. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. See, the grace of God will move you in the direction of living holy. Uh-huh. 
you know, right. of saying no to sin. Uh -huh. It's the grace of God. It's just like the love of God compels you, uh -huh. and the goodness of God yes. teaches you to say no to ungodliness. Uh -huh. I mean, it uh, teaches you to, uh, the, the, so, so what did I say? So, uh, the love of God teaches the, you. The love of God compels you. The goodness of God leads you to repentance. And the grace of God teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled godly lives. So, so uh, the love, the goodness, and the grace of God, those are teachers. They are the motivating agent, and, and they, they are the, um, the, the, the compelling agent, the, 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 what lead us into repentance. So And this is a key ingredient, too. Versus, uh, well, that drug, Jesus gave us a new command. See, he takes us from... Now, notice when he says uh, new. Uh-huh. He says new. That means that you could take that into the new covenant. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. you know, he hadn't died yet. Okay. He's still here. The, just like John is the one of the Gospels. So he's walking through the earth, and he's talking to his disciples. Right? And I know that from following and this is titled the New Commandment. Uh -huh. And he says, The new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all men will know that you are my disciples if you love, love one another. So his purpose is taking them into a love copy. So you can take that into the new commandment new covenant. And what is the key ingredient there? Is it, the key ingredient is you have to receive it to give it. Right? Right. So we have to be able to receive yeah. love to give love. Exactly. Right? Right. So what kind of love are you receiving from God? Because that's the kind of love you're going to give. Because he says, love as I have loved you. If he says, love one another as I have loved you. Right? Right? If I'm Jesus, I'm talking to you. I'm sitting down with you. You're my disciple. I'm saying, a new commandment I give you. Don't love others the way that I love you. Okay? So what am I asking you to do? What am I mainly asking of you? If I'm asking you to love others the way I love you. Get a load of your love. Uh, yeah. Uh, get a load of what? It's important that you get this. Because uh -huh. this is, he said this is a, he said this is a new commandment, meaning you can take this into the new covenant. Okay, so you, this is new stuff. Uh -huh. if, he's, if he's about to go to the cross, this is chapter 13 of John. And in, in about three, four chapters, he, he goes to the cross. Oh, okay. So this is toward the end of his his ministry uh -huh. and here he's giving you a new co commandment right before he goes to the cross right so this is obviously something you can take into the new covenant oh, okay. right he's actually introducing a new covenant program this is how it works oh okay is for you to receive from me and pass on what you're getting oh okay yeah okay uh -huh. it's not you get it's not you do to get okay yeah. okay like he said over here where he said to love one another, if you don't love if you don't forgive others you won't be forgiven uh-huh that was doing to get Oh, right, right. Right? Right, right. Because right. uh -huh. Jesus said that too. Right. He said, if you don't forgive, your heavenly Father won't forgive you. But if you do forgive, he'll forgive you. Right. So that was you had to do to get. Yes. See, Jesus is bringing in something new that says you have to receive to give. Okay. You, know the you don't, you don't do to get. Another economy of God. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. This is important. Absolutely. Because so what this says to me is what kind of love are you getting from God? Eternal love. Oh my gosh. Yes. Because that's what he wants. Unconditional love. Unconditional so love. So that that way I can pass that that's on. That's why to it's so important to how we see God. Oh. That's why it's so important that we have the right view of God. Oh. Otherwise we can't we can't be obedient to You're going to be vindictive? Yeah. You're going to hold a grudge. You know, you know, it's, it's going to be hard for you to forgive somebody if you don't understand how much you forgive it. Oh, yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's, it's going to be yeah. hard for you to love somebody uh -huh. if you don't know how much you're loved. Right. Right. That's like with Richard, you know. See, Richard that's Lovell. why that is so important, and people don't see that. And people don't understand because that's like very close Richard. And it, right. uh, that's why I love Andrew Womack how he goes on a whole series on "As I Have Loved You." Uh -huh. That one little verse. Love one another as I have loved you. So he's got a whole series called As I Have Loved You, expounding on that. Oh, wow. Telling you what the love of God is. Because I'll show you. He goes in 1 Corinthians 13. I like what you said. It's a little about, about you can't show love. And it's, it's how you see God is how you're going to... It's, it's yeah. how you're going to reflect that's how you're going to do. Your view of God is going to affect why, everything. That's yeah. why he sent Jesus so you can see what God is really like. Mm. I mean, dying on a cross for it. I'm praying, Father, forgive me. You just told us. 
being sympathizing with your weakness, you know, being merciful to your unrighteousness, dying for your sins, yes. taking the punishment for you, suffering in your place, mm. and to get a good look at that kind of love, and he says, now pass that on. That I don't know. That's Ooh. And look what he says. But what I did see this is the love chapter. Okay. Now, watch this. This is important. Because this says in 1 John, it says twice, it says here, for God is love. Okay. Yeah. God is love. You don't just say he has love. Um, right, right, right. Okay. He is love. Yeah. He is love. Yeah. Right? And here it says it again. God is love. He says it twice. Mm. You like how I highlight this stuff? So yeah, that it's yeah. easy to find it. It's easy to yeah. find God it. God is yeah. love. God is love. He says it twice. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. And he even says that we only love him because he first loved us. <laughs> See, so where is the love coming from? You can't get what you don't have. Right. He said, we only love him because he first loved us. So I can't even, what that's saying is I can't even love God until I understand that he loves me. Until I understand his love for me, I can't even come close to giving that kind of love back. He I'm only, I'm only going to give back the kind of love I think I'm getting. Are you feeling me? I'm only going to love God with the kind of love I think I'm getting. You think you love God? What? How much does God love you? Oh. And so First Corinthians. He loves us the way he wants us to love him. Yeah, he says. Yeah, he says, do, a, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. God, he's that, that me, that right there. He tells you to do unto others. He tells you to do unto Carlos as you would have Carlos do unto you. That's how God treats us. Yeah. yeah. So that's how God is doing you. He says, I'm doing you the way I want you to do me and to do others. I'm doing you that. Way. Isn't that what he said? To love one another as I have loved you. Yeah. Yeah. So. First Corinthians, First Corinthians 13, it says this. Where do we read? God is love. Now, First Corinthians is called the greatest gift. What is the greatest gift? Love. The love of God. Yeah. God's love. Yeah. That he poured out all his love on us through Jesus Christ. Yeah. Jesus is the greatest gift. He is. And he is love. It's a thanks be to God He's the love of God manifested. It's, it's kind of like, if I was God, and the heart represents the love. You ever see on Valentine's Day, oh, yeah. little hearts everywhere? Right. Because it's representing your love for your mate, your uh, love for your, your little baby sure. girl, right? Uh, and uh, so it's kind of like if I was God and I wanted to to show you how much I love you, to show you what kind of God I am. God is love. And I want to show you what kind of God I am, a God who is love. If I wanted to do that, I would take my heart out, you know, my heart of love, you know, not actual heart, just the, the love factor. Okay. I would take it out and I would wrap skin around it and I'd give you Jesus. Okay, because that's what God did in Jesus Christ. He gave you Himself. He gave you His heart. Jesus is the heart of God. You want to see what God's heart is really like? Well, well you look at Jesus. Wow. Okay. That's why He said, love one another as I That's why He says, love one another as I have loved you. Okay, because that's the heart of God. Jesus. Right? He says, um, and he says the greatest love. He says love. He goes on to say, say. Uh, um, he says love suffers long and is kind. You know what that means? Suffers long. Patient. No, means I, I put I to suffer that. long with you. For me to yeah. suffer long is a long time. Yeah, to, for me to suffer long with you is like if I was your parent, uh -huh. and was it your dad, uh -huh. and you keep getting in trouble, uh -huh. you know, and I keep. Opening the door, letting you back in, hoping you'll just, you know, get over, you know, get past it. I keep helping you, blessing uh, you, opening uh, the door, the door. Like a part of a son's father. Right, right. You know, uh, he suffered long with that boy going on. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah, Right? Yeah, that yeah. would be long suffering. I mean, wondering, right. is he dead? You know, he said, well, he was lost, but now he's found. Uh, he was dead, but now he's alive. Uh, for all he knew, he was dead somewhere. Not, he was suffering. Right. Not in, Just not knowing. Yes. Right? He uh -huh. was suffering long with that boy. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. But when he came home, he was like, yeah. ran to him, just so glad that he was alive. Right. That's what love, love does. It suffers long. Uh -huh. It puts up yeah. with your junk. Uh -huh. Yeah. A long okay? time. Okay? Uh -huh. And God is love. Uh -huh. Most people take this to just mean that's what our love should be like. Uh -huh. But like I said, Jesus said to love one another as I have loved you. Uh -huh. So this is more than just what my love is like. Right. This is what, Jesus love this is what like. God's love is like. Mm -hmm. For long. you. Right. He suffers long with you. He puts up with your junk. Right. The Bible says Jesus it says that Jesus sympathizes with your weakness. Uh -huh. Right? Right. Mm -hmm. So he suffers long. He is kind. Right. Okay? Wanna see what kind is? Wanna see? I'm gonna show you what kind is. I did. I walked You like this. Okay. I'm gonna show you what kind is. Ready? I know where you're going. 
You don't know. I do. Yeah, he's kind to the unthankful and the evil. Yeah. Luke two, uh, six thirty eight. I think it is. This is kind. A thirty. Uh, but love your enemies. That's God for you. Uh -huh. The Bible says he died for his enemies. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Do good. Didn't he tell you to love your enemies? Yes. Uh -huh. Right? He's telling you right here, love your enemies. Right. That's God for you. You could be at your worst. Total enemy of God. The Antichrist, like Paul. And God still loves you. Didn't he reach out to Paul? Yes. Didn't use Paul? Uh -huh. That was an enemy. That was Antichrist. He was an Antichrist. He was persecuting Christians. He was Antichrist. Right. An enemy of God. Uh -huh. He reaches out to him. He tells you to do that. Well, what do you think? You think he's not going to do that for you? Absolutely. Look, but love your enemies. Do good and lend to them, hoping for nothing in return. Okay? And your reward will be great. And your sons in the highest. For he is kind to the good people. No. He's not. He doesn't say kind to the good people. He is kind to the unthankful and the evil. Oh, okay? wow. That's kind. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And God is love, and He's telling you what God love us. So God is kind, okay. So He's strong, suffering, and puts up with your junk, right? And it gives you time to come, come, like with me in jail, throwing God on the bus. He was patient with me, strong, suffering. He put up with my junk. He saw a future for me. He still wanted to use me. He still, he still saw me doing this right now, preaching the gospel. He saw me doing this right now when I was in my mess. Yes. You gotta understand that. When you're in your mess, messing up. Yes. Where, how does God see you? It's the same. He sees you, you know, ministering. He sees you trusting. He sees uh, you loving and passing that love on. Uh, he sees you doing the stuff that he wants you to do. Oh, uh, yeah. Pleasing God, because he works in you to will to do it. Yeah. So that's how he sees you. So love suffers long, is kind, and does not envy. Okay? What does it mean, does not envy? Dylan, give it to you. It's is not uh, wanting what other people have. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah. Okay, does not parade itself. Okay, is not puffed up. It does not behave rudely. So God's not rude. Okay, does not seek his own. That's powerful. Does not seek his own. You look at it, it says 1024. Let's look what that says. Yeah. Um, do you have any? I do. I have um, one person who needs That's good. Why yeah. is this? It is. Let no one seek his own, but oh. each one the other's well-being. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's what it means to not seek your own. Yeah. yeah. Does not seek his own. Let no one seek his own, but each one is others, uh, the other's well-being. Isn't that good, Carlos? Isn't that great? Isn't that a good one? <laughs> yeah. Calculates it. Uh -huh. Okay. Is not provoked. You know what that means, not provoked? Yeah. That means not vindictive. Yeah, you can't, yeah he's not, um, you, you can't push his button. Yeah. 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 That's heavy. Yeah. God is love, and he's saying this is God. Yeah. You think he can press his buttons? Dude, his, his buttons are unpushable. Yeah. He says the fruit yeah. of the Holy Spirit is self-control. He wants you to be self-controlled. Well, God is totally self-controlled. He can't be provoked. Right, right, right. Like I tell people, that, that the Bible says he can't be tempted by sin. That means his, his sin does not affect him the way, the way it affects you. You think it's your sin affects him the way it affects you. And it doesn't. He can't even be provoked. You can Right. I can press your buttons, right. yeah, yeah. but his can't. Yeah. Right. right? And he's telling you that's what your love should do. You should prevent, you should turn, be able to, your love should turn the other teeth like he does. Right? Right? Uh -huh. <laughs> right? It's not provoking. It thinks no evil. God does not think evil thoughts. He does not think any evil. It does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. And it bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. That's heaven. Right there. Because that one translation says it. That he always hopes the best. He always sees the best. He always protects you. You know what it means to always see your best? What the Bible says, fix your thought, fix your thoughts on what is excellent, praiseworthy, the good report. Okay? That's hope. That's telling you to always see the best. Always hope the best. Right? Right. So and, and with with Dylan and me, I should always that should be me. Right. If, if Jesus says, I love one another as I've loved you, God is love. That's his kind of love. Uh -huh. Okay, so I should always see the best in them. Right. I should hope the best for them. What you do? That's what God does for you. That's what God does for me. Right. I should do that for him. Didn't right. I do that for you? I, I do that for you. Your enemy. God does this for his enemies. He says, I love your enemies. Right? Right. Right? So God even does that for enemies like I did for Chris. I, do. I still saw the best. 
Right, and you're a good right? example for Richard Warndorf. We went to Costco and you bought him two pairs of shoes, you, you, you showered him with love, you bought him socks, and you know. Richard Warndorf. Oh, yeah. yeah, Richard Warndorf. I forgot about it. Costco and, and you did such a beautiful thing for him. You bought him shoes, you bought him socks, and you asked him, is there anything else you need, Richard? Remember that? Yeah, that was good. an act of I mean, what you're talking about right now. Yeah. Beautiful. But like I say, always see the best that was helping us. You know, it's like, it's sort of like I, I say, a good example would be if Dylan said something about me uh -huh. to somebody. Yeah. And they come to me and they tell me, Dylan said this stuff about me. Uh -huh. And I would go to bat for Dylan and I'd say, well, he didn't mean it. Right. You know, I find that hard to believe he even said that. Right. You know, you might have misheard him. Uh -huh. Okay, but even if he said it, he wasn't thinking. Right. You know, that, that's not Dylan. Right. He was probably out of character that day, that, that, that moment. Uh, you know, that would be speaking well of him, hoping the best, seeing the best. Mm -hmm. I would, I'd be able to speak for him, you know, defend him, mm -hmm. you know, because I don't want to think this of Dylan. Right. I don't want to think that of Dylan. Right. It's like a husband would do it. Huh? It's like a husband would for a wife, like Ed did for Ellen, Ed Swift. Yeah. Did for Ellen Swift. He said that. Uh, oh, yeah, when yeah, he that said, thing with the relationship. Yeah, and, yeah. and I said, uh, told Ed something about Ellen because Ellen did something against me. And Ed said, let me talk to my wife about it. I I, I, I think I know what's going on, you know. Yeah. So. But this is, that's what it means when it says believes all things, hopes all things. Well, maybe. When it says all things, it means all things good. Mm -hmm. Right? You see, because he said he thinks no evil. Right, 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 right before right. he said he thinks no evil. Oh, yeah. So when he says, when he jumps in, it bears all things, believes all things, he's thinking all good things. Yeah, of course. <laughs> right? Because he thinks no evil. Yeah. Right? So he's talking yeah. about he hopes all things. He only sees good things coming from your life, Father. That's why he says that I know the plans I have for you, they're for good and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Right? Because that's what he sees. That's what he's got for you. Yeah. And he wants you to see that. Isn't that good? That's yeah. good stuff. I'm going to cut it off now because we've got to get back up. Okay, you going?